Hello. We recently posted a video about how to assemble a Singer treadle cabinet uh, that was specifically for a delivery of a number of machines we made to a charitable organization. And we didn't have an opportunity to work with the folks there to show them how to reassemble the, the cabinets. We had to take them apart to, to get everything in our car and transport it to Colorado. So we made that video. It was just intended to be looked at by a few people to help reassemble the cabinets. But we've gotten over 2,400 views, so we thought, okay, we'll try it again. Uh, this time, we purchased a, a Singer Featherweight Model 221. Uh, very nice machine. It's in good condition. Uh, we got it at an estate sale. And uh, it doesn't need a lot of TLC, but uh, of course the electrics need some work. So today we're going to um, rewire the uh, foot controller, the uh, main power, and replace uh, the, the uh, power cable and wire all that into uh, the power plug. So we'll get started on that in just a minute. As often happens with uh, machines of, the, of this vintage, uh, the electrical wiring insulation starts deteriorating, dry rotting, cracking, and you can see bare wire there. So the wiring going into this machine uh, definitely needs to be replaced. Uh, the power plug looks pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, it's molded on and we'll have to replace this entire assembly or power cord and put a new cord on. And you can see it's, it's really bad up here by, um, by the power plug. So again, that, that'll all have to be replaced. Now the problem with the older wiring is that it, it does get brittle. Uh, if you uh, bend it, you can actually feel it cracking and and uh, would would definitely cause a problem uh, maybe get somebody shocked or have the machine stop working so we'll see if we can fix all that all right we'll start on our process by taking apart the foot controller on this particular model there are four screws to take out and they are uh, enclosed in these uh, wrap-around feet cushions. So we'll just take those out and let you see what that looks like. And I haven't opened this previously, so you'll be surprised along with me depending on what it looks like in here. So the four feet are out. We'll get the screws out in just a minute. And pry this apart. This stuff is Bakelite, so you you can crack these if, if you're a little rough with them or get them in a bind and try to keep going. <clears throat> so just take your time. Get them pulled apart. And that's what it looks like inside. All right, so we'll take off the four feet. Get the four screws out. So the, the screws go through each side of the feet. So when you, when you put them back in, the screws will go through like so on the plate. So just a little tip for reassembly in, in a couple of minutes. So we'll keep all the parts together. So this is the assembly inside. Uh, when you press on the on the button in the cover, the there there are um, carbon pads on each side of this, and as you press up on this and that plunger raises, what it's doing is squeezing those carbon pads together, causing less resistance, sending more current to the motor and therefore the motor will run faster. When you get it all the way to the top, 
you can see it, it contacts these two leafs and now you've got a direct path through the switch wire back to the motor. So you wanna make sure that you clean those off too. Those look a, a little oxidized in, in uh, this particular one. I'm, I'm not gonna take it apart. Uh, you, you can take them apart, take, take this ceramic um, part off, take that out, and then you've got like a hundred carbon discs in here that, that would come out. I have done that before uh, when I had a machine that after rewiring didn't do well. So I took that apart and um, cleaned each of those carbon discs and put them back in and then reassembled it. And it, it did run better at that point. But I, I can see on this one, we need to clean um, that plate where it contacts those two leafs and should give you full speed on the motor. All right, so we'll get started here with rewiring this. You, you can see this is falling apart, so it's, it, it, it is definitely bad wiring. So we begin um, rewiring the foot controller. Wanted to say just a, a little bit about the wire that I'll be using. Uh, in this case, it looks like this is probably maybe nickel plated copper wiring, uh, probably an 18 gauge wire. Um, the uh, 18 gauge wire that I'm going to be using is uh, actually rated for uh, 10 amps, I believe it is. Uh, most motors pull between 0.4 and 0.7 amps. If you add up to uh, say a 15 watt bulb, then it's, it's pulling less than one amp. So 18 gauge wire is very uh, adequate for this. I like to use this type of wire, and I believe I got this at Home Depot, because it's, it's a, a little bit smaller insulation than, than the old wire. You, you can tell that it's, it's quite a bit different. It's, this is easier to work with. Uh, the older wire had thicker insulation because it was not quite as efficient as the uh, thermoplastics that, that they have available now. Uh, there's a couple of types of these. This is one that's a, a vintage look uh, wire. Uh, the reason I like this is it's, it's much easier to deal with, uh, to finish and uh, have a, a nice looking cable. If you really want to do a restoration on this, um, I've always ended up, you know, a restoration look. I've always ended up using a piece of heat shrink and then bringing that up to the, um, the ends of the wire. And then uh, this will shrink down and uh, hold this lacing so that it doesn't continue to fray. Uh, it, it's just a little more work. It depends on what kind of look you want in the end. Uh, the electrons inside the copper don't really care what it looks like on the outside. So either one is, is very sufficient to use. So we'll uh, get started. Um, you can use um, a ring terminal. I was looking to see if I have one here. A uh, spade terminal, different types of crimp on terminals that then would fit on the screws. What I like to do is make my own loops. Uh, I've, had, I've had a lot of experience uh, soldering. Uh, I've been working either in aircraft uh, maintenance. Um, I, I've also worked as a residential electrician. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer, so I've had a lot of uh, experience with it. And so I just like to really Effectively, what I think this does is it, it makes your own loops. So I use uh, the stranded wire, get it twisted real well, and then make a loop out of the strand. You need to kind of finesse it as you make the loop. And once you get that completed, 
then you can you, you just do a, a a solder basically to make it solid make the loop solid okay so this is a, a helping hand uh, this particular one is one that I got at Harbor Freight but it helps you uh, keep the the loops together uh, you can use both hands for soldering uh, this is just a a solder pencil. I've got a, a fairly fancy soldering station because um, my son and I uh, restore uh, synthesizer keyboards. So we do a bit of electronics work, but with this, uh, any soldering iron will do this. You just get it heated up, let the solder start flowing. And all you want to do is get a uh, a coating on there. You, you don't want to uh, make it globs of solder or make it real thick. You don't, you don't need that. As a matter of fact, that's a little bit too thick right there. So you just work, heat it back up again, flick it off there a little, and that's what you have after that's completed. So then, you just take this, put it under the, the screw, tighten that down, get all the debris out of there, put this one in, tighten it down, and it helps if you get the um, the wire in between uh, these standoffs here, just it'll just help hold things in place. One of the things you want to make sure of is when you put this on, that the loop goes with the direction you're tightening the screw, because then as you tighten the screw, it will it will tend to pull that loop around the screw rather than trying to push it out of the screw. So then we'll use this and we'll have this put together. All right, we'll get started with reassembly of the foot controller. Uh, what I've done is added a piece of uh, heat shrink so that you can see how it works, but also that will give the wire a little bit of protection as it comes through this area where the, uh, the teeth hold it in place. So it just takes a little bit of heat. You can get different types of heat shrink. I think this one shrinks to um, one fourth its its original size. So that'll give us a, a, a nice uh, protection coming through uh, that opening. So then the next thing I'm going to do is, I've already cleaned the contacts that I mentioned earlier here and underneath this leaf. So I'm just gonna clean this side just getting the oxidation knocked off of there. Looks like this is maybe set in a damp area where um, the metal has gotten a little bit of oxidation on it and would, uh, it, it, it would just uh, not give you full, full speed on your motor uh, because it, it wouldn't uh, make a real good con uh, connection when you're pressed down fully. Yeah, I'm just knocking it off. I'm not trying to file away a lot of material. Any burrs or any burn spots that might be there. And that looks pretty good. And I, I cut uh, the piece of wire using the old wire as a pattern. So I, that's, that's the length I have. And I'm gonna then just finish up by putting just a little bit of oil in these pivots. And exercise it a little bit to get the oil in there. I think everything looks pretty good there. All right, so the next thing is to um, put the, together our foot controller. Then the foot controllers I'd mentioned earlier, they go back on, they go on first. So they will uh, fit at the corners. And those are your cushions that it will sit on and the, the screws that'll hold the whole thing together. So we'll put this in here, make sure that our wire gets in the slot at the bottom. And 
Sometimes a little finessing is in order. There we go. I believe we got it together. And again, you, you don't want to make this super tight because again, this this is Bakelite, and it will uh, it will crack. I'll probably hand tighten these just a little bit so I don't go too tight with the the impact wrench here. Next, we'll start on the power plug and rewiring it. So this will take this apart. And you can see that the, the wiring is, is really bad there. And it, it does get a little congested inside the power plug. So I think the, um, the thinner insulation on the wire that we'll be using will, will help us out there. So we'll get this plug taken apart. Once again, hang on to all the parts. Okay. So the wiring is um, set up so that the, the power wiring comes into here and then it feeds out from here and goes to the um, to the motor from the foot controller. The, the foot controller is just acting, acting like a, a switch, like a light switch, really like a, a dimmer for a light, and uh, feeds down through the, uh, the controller and, and then back out. Now these are a little bit different in that they have a, let's see if I can get this open, yeah. They have uh, their wire that wraps around um, this post and then just uh, the, the nut gets put back on those and all this gets put back together. So we'll see if we can't get this fixed. All right, so I've removed uh, the second post for this wire and then I'll, I'll take off the third post and the reason I wanted to show it is that you'll see on this third post there are actually two wires connected. One goes to the um, to the power cable that comes in, and the other goes to uh, the foot controller. They connect together here. Then the other side of the power cable goes to this post, so that through the foot controller, this side of the power cable comes back, and this will connect to the motor, making the connection there. So we're going to take this all apart here. Pull this out. And we don't need this cable anymore, but we need our foot controller. And we're also going to need another length of new wire. Did I manage to lose? Oh, here it is. Um, so this, I, I don't have a power plug on it now, but this will get a power plug to plug in the wall after we're, after we're finished with this. So at this point, we need to um, bring these wires through. Okay, now that we've uh, taken the, the power plug apart and gotten two new wires in, uh, I, I slipped some heat shrink down over again just to, to give a little bit of strain relief and uh, protection when I get this put together and the connector put back together, then I can move the heat shrink up into this connector and have a bit of protection. And if it works out that the heat shrink doesn't doesn't do the job for you, you, you can always just come along and snip it off. Um, so, sometimes you, you don't have a lot of room to get the heat shrink into these connectors and they really don't do anything for you. But let's give it a try. Uh, I've wrapped the, the wire that will be coming from the power plug from the wall with tape just so I can 
keep up with it because I'll, I know I'll have to know where to put it on the power plug. So now I'm going to put together um, one leg of the power cord coming in and one leg of the foot controller. We'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to strip about an inch off of there. Soldering iron to wake up. And what I'm doing is just like they did on the original, I'm going to put these two wires together. and solder those so they've got a good connection. But I don't need all this wire. As a matter of fact, I can only get one wire around the terminal post. So we'll put this together. Okay solder that and this will be the only soldering we do on this connector it, it works better with the stranded wire going around these terminal posts than trying to solder like when I made the loop okay, you get the solder flowing here that looks pretty good Okay, good connection. Now then, we'll get this wrapped around the terminal post. Nice, tight wrapping, twisting rather. And it goes on the, on the short side where the the little indention is here for the wire to lay in. Round that out a little bit. And then And again, these have these have a flat side, and they have a side with a um, a groove so that the wire lays in it. You want the groove next to the wire. Then tighten that down, and then these will will lay in the connector uh, with. like so and they, they do actually have corners so that the the hex nut fits down in the corner and will lock will stay in place once you put the thing together so that would that would lay in like so this wire would lay back in the um, the cavity here you need about three hands for this and when when I get these other two put on then this whole thing will clamshell together this part if you look down in in it it also has the indentions for the angles on this uh, terminal so I'm going to go ahead and, and get these uh, fixed and put together here we go having the uh, terminals ready to go into one half of the connector shell. I'm turning the wires down so they'll fit in these little troughs, hopefully. Give that a little bend so it lays in there.
Okay, so that one's in. There are six points on these uh, terminals and they have corresponding indentions for those points in the connector. So you have to, to hit those, get them lined up, get the wire laid in where it needs to go. that one that wants to jump out all right finally I believe we've got it now Hang on to it so it doesn't come apart while you're trying to get a screw in there. Have the screw on the wrong, put it in the wrong way. There are, there are actually um, hex indentions for, for the nut to go in and hold so you don't have to hold it. On the apparently the top side of this connector so you can see that the nut will fit down in there and that keeps it from spinning just hold it in there put the screw in and there we go oh I, I did forget to mention that the, the power the, you recall I marked the one for the power cord, that the two wires, one will go to terminal one and one will go to terminal three. So you need to make sure that, that those are in place when you put this together. So the power cord, terminal one and terminal three. Okay. We'll pull the heat shrink up here. I think it'll actually help us out in this case, just with the, uh, the wires so that they're not kinked or yeah i can feel it going in place so i think that'll work just fine we'll um put a little heat on here all right then the next thing will be uh, attaching a plug that will go into the wall on this end so now I'm going to put on the power plug. Uh, this is a new type of plug. First time I've used it. Uh, we'll see how well it works. There's a, a retainer block here. It gets removed. And then the uh, prongs just come out like so. We can then run this through the block, strip these, and then probably strip uh, maybe three quarters of an inch. My, my strippers have uh, markings on them that tell me how much I'm stripping off. Th these are pretty nice strippers to use. They'll adapt to any wire gauge that you have. All right, so then this is a Phillips. Take that screw loose. And you want to bring it through the slot. 
and wrap it again. Remember the screw is going to turn clockwise, so we want to make sure our uh, wire is wrapped clockwise so that it will be captured under the screw and pull tight as opposed to the screw trying to push it out. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good wrap. I'm actually going to try something a little bit different on this one. This might work for you in some cases. I'm just going to take the wire and just put a little bit of solder on the very tip end. Not enough to make the loop stiff but enough to hold the ends of the loop together so that it doesn't fray out when you when you bend it out. We'll see how that works. So I'll put that on there. Bring it back through the slot. Get it around the screw. Yeah, I think that's gonna work pretty well with just a little bit of solder on the end of the loop. Keeps it from flying out. So I'll do the same here. All right. So there's my loop. Go through the groove and over the, under the screw head. Again, the polarity makes no difference on these sewing machines. Uh, and I, I didn't really pay attention to that on this plug because there is no actual polarity for the, uh, the motor and the light bulb. They don't really care which way you hook them up. Okay, so then now we'll put the spades back in here. And we put our retainer back in. And there we have a power plug. So that is uh, that is the, the foot controller. It's been rewired. And that connects to the plug that goes on the machine. And also we have a new power cord. So that is a complete rewiring. And we're going to test it out. When I check this with a voltmeter, because pin one and pin three should be coming directly from the wall receptacle, I should get 120 volts from pin one to pin three. Okay, that is correct. Now the controller, the foot controller feeds the center pin. And when you check there, it should be a a low voltage and as you press the foot controller you should start getting more and more voltage kind of a quick jump there we'll have to see how well that works with the actual motor the motor may load it a little bit it seems like we're getting the voltage very quickly but we'll check it with the the real motor but at least we know the, the wiring is correct. So that's rewiring the foot controller, the power plug, and the wall plug for a featherweight. I hope this has been of some use to you and maybe a little educational. So thanks for watching.